Last two points, though. I always say this. Go on. Last points. I go on my own. But the good news for us is that on issue after issue, there is much more commonality of thought than the pundits tell us. Now, I know, and you all know, and this state may be more so than most, there are strong divisions over women's issues, right? You have the very strong anti-abortion movement in the state. I am pro-choice, have been pro-choice my whole life. Yeah! There are divisions over gay rights, and I'm very proud that my state has led America in terms of gay marriage and civil unions, all that right. There are divisions on those issues. But here's the point. On issues like raising the minimum wage, Republicans, not all of them, but many of them agree with us. On issues about whether you give tax breaks to billionaires and cut Social Security, vast majority of the Republicans agree with us. On issues about investing in infrastructure and creating jobs, majority of Republicans agree with us. So what our political task is, is to bring people together. What the Republicans try to do, and they do it successfully, is divide people. Our job is to bring people together, understanding that there are going to be differences of opinion. But bring people together around an agenda that says government should represent the vast middle class and working families of our country and not just the 1%. That's our job. Let me conclude, and this time I will conclude. I'll let you get back to you. <laughs> These are tough issues that we're facing today. I think it is fair to say that there has probably never been a series of problems, if you throw in climate change, more serious in the modern history of America. And there's no duck in that. These problems are very real, and they are very difficult. But remember this, and it's important to remember this. The problems that we have are largely brought about by bad human decisions. Bad decisions. Human beings can make change. It's not God-ordained. People made bad decisions. We can undo those decisions. And I beg of you, do not ever throw up your hands in despair and give up. That is exactly what our opponents want us to do. And for the sake of our kids and grandchildren, we cannot do that. And I will tell you this, and I want you all to think about this, because sometimes we take change for granted. As Americans, we should be extraordinarily proud of very profound changes that have taken place in this country over the last many decades. Changes that we now take for granted. Let me give you an example. If we were sitting in this room 30 years ago, and somebody got up and said, you know, I think the United States of America is maturing, I think we're overcoming racism, and I think that in the year 2008, we're going to elect an African-American president and an almost all-white state like Iowa is going to play a role in that. And four years later, he's going to be re-elected with a pretty good vote. You know what people in this room would have said? They would say, you're nuts. America is not, maybe someday, but it ain't going to happen in our lifetimes. That's what people would have said. And yet it happened. It happened. And we should be very proud of the degree to which America has overcome racism. We have a long way to go, but we should be proud of what we have accomplished. And you know how we did that? Didn't happen overnight, didn't happen just because of great people like Martin Luther King Jr. It happened because for decades and decades, people struggled, went to jail, sometimes died, stood up with incredible bravery, and said racism is not what America is about. And overall, while we still have a long way to go, we have won that victory. That is a big deal, and we should be proud of that. Give you another example. 25 years ago, do you know how many women there were in the United States Senate? One. Barbara Mikulski of Maryland. Now there are 20, and no one has any doubt that in the coming decades, more and more Congress people will be women, and probably in 20, 30 years, more than half will be women. When I was mayor of Burlington, Vermont, 1980s, it was a big deal. I helped appoint the first woman to be a police officer. What a big deal. Now, you have women who are generals, you have women who are in combat, you have women who are CEOs. 
Not so many years for the young people. They may not know this. It's important to know this. 30, 40 years ago, the percentage of women in medical school or, league or law school, very little. You didn't have things like women plumbers or women truck drivers. Whole parts of the economy were denied to women. Have we ended sexism completely? Absolutely not. Have we made real progress in breaking down barriers for women? Of course we have. We should be proud of that. How did that happen? Think some governor or a senator woke up one day and said, I think we should do this? It happened because women and their male allies struggled and said, we are American citizens. We're entitled to the same rights as men. And their male allies work with them, and we have largely succeeded. Didn't happen by accident. It happened by struggle. And I'll give you another example. And this state played an important role in this. When I was young, people who had kids with disabilities, who knows what happened those days? Kids were institutionalized, families were ashamed. You remember that? It was like a, a, a bad thing, a terrible thing, that a child was born with Down syndrome or some other ailment. As a result of the struggle of a whole lot of people, not least of all your Senator Tom Harkin, who helped pass the ADA, and it was a big deal. Today, in schools in Iowa and schools in Vermont, you have kids with severe disabilities who are loved and cherished by the other students. I have been to graduations, some of you may have, where the kid with a disability gets up there and gets his or her diploma and gets the loudest applause. Right? I don't know if you've seen that. But what we have done is say that children with disabilities should not be hidden away. They're part of the human family. They should be loved and appreciated. No small thing. That happened because of struggle. And the last and most recent example of this deals with gay rights. Forget 30 or 40 years ago. 10 years ago, if we were sitting in this room and somebody jumped up and said, you know, I think that gay marriage would be made legal in some of the most conservative states in America. Whoa. The sheriff would be out there asking what these people were smoking. Right? No one would have thought that. But it happened. You know how it happened? Because of struggle. And because when I go around the state of Vermont and I talk at high schools, and I do that a lot, and I talk to some conservative parts, and say, you talk about gay marriage, you know what the kids say? They say, duh, what's the issue? <laughs> that's, what, that's the truth. Now, the grandparents may feel differently about it. But for the kids, and Republicans understand it. Five years ago, six years ago, what did the Republicans run on, right? Homophobia. Yeah. All right? They don't talk about it anymore, because they understand history has passed them by. They understand that if you talk talking about that, the young generation and millions of Americans are going to turn away from that. So what's the point of all of this? The point is that change, positive change, can happen and has happened. The point is that the United States of America today is a much less discriminatory society than it used to be, and you help make that happen. And you should be proud of those accomplishments. They are no small things. But, and here's the but, in terms of economics, we have not made progress. And in fact, in terms of economics, we are moving in the wrong direction. Middle class shrinking, rich getting richer. And this fight for economic justice, to simply say that in America, all working people are entitled to decent jobs, decent income, our kids are entitled to education, all of our people are entitled to health care as a right, that struggle has not yet been won. But I believe, just as we have made real progress in fighting racism and sexism and homophobia, we can win that struggle if we stand together, if we don't let our opponents divide us, if we get actively involved in the political process. So my message to you, which you already know, is stand up, fight back, and let's create an America and a government that works for all and not just the top 1%. Thank you all very much.